there was this period in in history in uh, Salem where a rumor started to spread that there were uh, witches and that these uh, these women who were considered to be witches were uh, causing um, ill health and, and other effects in, in this town. And so all of a sudden, out of what was otherwise a, a um, fairly united community, this persecution of these women uh, took off and it seemed to have a life of its own. And uh, women were brought forward and accused of witchcraft and uh, put through a kind of um, you know, trial process that was not based on reality at all and it was just self-confirming that th these women were uh, witches. Um, you know, I think the, the classic example is you throw them into water and if they, um, if they float, they're a witch and if they drown, then they're not a witch. And so, you know, it was a bad outcome either way for that person. Um, but, but somehow uh, people got caught up in this group think this self-confirmatory sort of bias and and i think we're seeing some of those sorts of things occurring now in our society as well where people have got caught up in a certain way of thinking about things that doesn't marry up to the facts or to reality but has taken on a life of its own mm. and it, it's a really important point to make because we all long for an adherence towards a particular group and the prevailing narrative makes it a lot easier to uh, line yourself up to one group at the expense of another that may and whatever that prevailing narrative is uh, in whatever historical epoch you find yourself in it smacks of the idea as you talk about the Salem witch trials of McCarthyism that J. Edgar Hoover, uh, you know, sit on a, uh, sorry, no, it was, was it McCarthy? McCarthy at the time, Jacob Hoover was later on, uh, I think. Uh, but anyways, the McCarthy was the, the head of the FBI at the time, and he was trying to you know, bring out any, uh, any communists that were in America at the time. And, and it was just turned out to be just another one of those Salem witch trials where people were dobbing on other people and, uh, you know, he brought up a bit of a, a resentment within the community, a sense of in-group, out-group bias and, and how that influences. So we see this as we, as we already spoken about in so many different, like Tutsis and the, the um, Hutus in, Uganda at the time mm -hmm. where they just by uh, just by finding yourself in a different tribe one tribe was lighter skinned and the other tribe was darker skinned uh, one was more uh, related to the workers the other one um, had had more associations with the, the kind of middle to upper class and they would just go that they were um uh, described these these Tutsis uh, clans were described as vermin, synonymous to what what we hear, what we heard in Hitler's dinner talks, where he would just start to describe these Jews as as cockroaches that needed to be to be exterminated these rats and he wasn't that that was kind of came later on in his in his rule at the beginning he just wanted them out of of germany he he just didn't want the the jewish population to be a part of germany he actually at one point he wanted to ship them off over to madagascar um which is an interesting thing that and then he kind of well we can't do that let's kill everybody uh, tutsis and the hutus i think they were part of the early 90s and then and the peacekeepers in the unit un um could do nothing but just sit by and watch them just hack them hack each other to death uh it was a terrible thing so you we see this in so many different historical uh epochs we, we've just talked about the past hundred years or so but this is scattered throughout history and we've seen them at different geographical locations uh from a from a point of view of species performing in-group, inter-species uh, 
uh, hunting down and killing of the same species. This happens in two, two species only. Could you guess what those species are? Oh, human beings would be one of them. Yeah. I don't know what the other one is. Chimpanzees. Right. Those yeah. are the only two. And we share uh, upwards of a 99% genetic uh, predisposition or uh, genetic uh, closeness to mm. chimpanzees. Uh, but that 1% makes all the difference, as uh, geneticists tell us. What I would say is that, so chimpanzees form clans. They legitimately form clans. And then they raid opposing uh, opposing neighborhoods and they they target and they kill other chimpanzees and then they they go back to their own clans mm. it's like it's it's a very it's not that the the chimpanzee it's not a defensive it's an offensive experience and uh, jane goodall for example saw a lot of this in in the 1970s where she was very very hesitant to publish on this because at that point, at that time, nature, nature was uh, well. Chimpanzees were seen as kindly beasts, and uh, mm -hmm. they weren't they weren't to be uh, you know they weren't to be seen the way that they were eventually seen.